within the Ukraine between uh, smaller and bigger cities. And uh, most of literature I read about the gap uh, has some, uh, I don't know, bad or negative connotation and context. But uh, I, uh, when I look at it, on the gap, uh, at the gap, uh, different like uh, education, economics, wealth, uh, I perceive it more as a challenge to, um, to solve, to fix, not as something bad, but as something that we have to deal with. And uh, my recent experience, why, why I'm talking about it, um, this year, this, this is video my, my friends made for me. I was a candidate on uh, parliamentary elections. And we have this weird system when we, you half of the parliament elected by the party list and half in single constituencies. So I went to my home uh, town, which is single constituency. And uh, in Ukraine, uh, we have this like, where mostly urban um, uh, population and rural. So my single constituency is uh, rural. It's almost 300 villages. So during campaign, I was going and handing out my newspapers and calendars and talking to people, not in Kiev, in this uh, nice, uh, welcoming, warm bubble of Western educated Ukrainians, but in my hometown, in smaller villages, with people on the markets, in, uh, in the stores, everywhere. And um, I understood that the, the gap exists, and the gap not just in terms of money earning, but in terms of what surrounds you, what, uh, like what do you have, what opportunities do you have. And I started thinking, um, what are the origins of this gap? Like why in smaller cities, for example, in Ukraine, uh, people not talking about uh, I don't know global issues or uh, creating some like new businesses uh, because I used to travel I used to live in Belgium I used to study in France and I've been to smaller villages there and um, they, I will tell I will repeat many times this word the gap the gap there is not uh, you cannot um, it's less noticeable mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Um, or Germany, any, any other European country, you don't feel, uh, you don't feel it. Uh, another, like some geeky fun facts, um, in Poland, uh, I will uh, talk about, uh, uh, so here in Ukraine, we have almost a third of population in the rural areas. Uh, so th this rural areas, it's not, it's just villages, not, uh, we don't count small cities like mine, into rural areas. So basically, uh, the, the division into rural and urban is bigger because officially they don't count smaller cities as, 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 as rural. Um, I will make small comparison to Poland because uh, uh, why? Ukraine is used to be compared to Poland. Are there any Polish people in the room? Yes. So in uh, 1991 or 1990, we had basically the same GDP per capita. And you see uh, how it goes uh, until now. Uh, and um, the geek effect. Uh, there is a PISA assessment. It's assessment of um, school education, secondary education. So uh, they try to, like, was given the same test to 15-year-old um, students in schools all around the world, the, all those countries who applied for this assessment, uh, the same test, and they do the, uh, the mapping of the level of secondary education. So <coughs> uh, PISA scores in Poland, uh, the difference between PISA scores in the village and in Warsaw is less than the, er the margin of errors. So in Poland, uh, their education reforms uh, made um, secondary education, school education in smaller cities and villages as good as in Warsaw. So this is this, uh, and for me, this is one of the explanations of why is it so? Because uh, in uh, the, the process of like building the personality, the character, uh, one of the pillars of it is a school, and because uh, kids in their like teenage years and uh, early years, they spend, I know, half a day in school, and this is where they, they have learning environment, they have social environment.
this is where they uh, learn how to be a human, a citizen. So um, this is for me one of the explanation and this is why I used this comparison because we have quite a uh, similar starting point in 1990 and uh, we are more or less the same in terms of geography, in terms of population. So uh, I know maybe uh, like some other comparison would not be that adequate, but this one is good to illustrate uh, what we're going to talk about later. Um, yeah, uh, next, uh, like to, to complete the, the picture and the, um, uh, I know I will, will have some discussions and questions and back and forth. Um, sorry for Ukrainian, I will try to translate to you. Uh, this is the um, uh, level of satisfaction uh, of Ukrainians by different aspects of their life, comparison of 2017 uh, and 2019. So inner circle is uh, 2017, uh, outer circle is 2019. So uh, the uh, dark blue is fully satisfied. The bit lighter, uh, this one, is more satisfied than unsatisfied with their like different aspects of life. So you see, in two years, it's incre it, it increased. Um, then um, the equal, so satisfied and satisfied is is equal. Um, and then as as follows, more unsatisfied and satisfied and. Uh, fully unsatisfied and uh, hard to say. Uh, so you see in two years we have positive dynamics in people's perception of what they see, what they have. So dynamic is positive. Uh, my explanation for that uh, is um, uh, like it's, it works as for good and, and, and for bad as well is um, internet, social media and globalization because uh, this level of satisfaction back in the 90s could be uh, like, you know, uh, the same or different, but people didn't share it with many others. They could share it on the market when the personal conversation, but because we have social media, everything goes public. And your political position, your vacations, everything like some car that my neighbor has that I don't have, and <laughs> this and stuff like that. Uh, make make people like or more satisfied or or less satisfied, but the exchange of information in, uh, increased dramatically. So um, uh, and uh, like depends on who rules the information sphere. Depends on what they show you on TV. Uh, the this uh, like sentiment to towards uh, life you will have. Um, interesting book, uh, The War for Reality, is issued this year, and the idea there uh, is that um, the actual combat or warfare comes, like, goes from the field to the internet, and uh, there were bright examples on um, because we recently had elections, and before elections, it was. Uh, Swearing in, in the comments on Facebook and like uh, people were uh, uh, I don't know so angry and so pissed. As soon as the election day is over, calm down. Everything calm down and uh, uh, until next elections. But uh, um, we see how much the information sphere, the internet, the social media influences uh, people's everyday life. And uh, I can say that depends on uh, when during the 19 and 17 the poll was, uh, was running, if it was before elections or after, it depends, the, uh, it, it influences the answers. Because this turmoil in, in social media, uh, I know, broke some families and uh, some friendship and, and others. But what I'm saying that Despite the fact that we have this intense information warfare uh, within Ukrainian society and like a Russia interference and, and etc., uh, we still have positive dynamics into satisfactory direction, so which is good. Another chart. Sorry for sorry, the. Sorry to ask yes. Because also, if I understood correctly, it's also. A uh, growing amount of people who are completely disappointed, right? Yeah, uh, exactly, you're right, but uh, if 
if to compare with this one, it's not uh, like yeah. that drastic. Because the gap is bigger. Yeah, yeah. 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 and, and uh, th those people who are in the middle, they uh, shrink. And yeah. hard to say is from 1% to 21%? Yeah, you no, know, it's uh, too uh, oh, okay. hard to say, uh -huh. and this is, it doesn't matter for me. Oh, okay. It's one uh -huh. and one there. I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, another thing about spheres of life, so it's the same survey, and the same comparison of two, uh, 2017 and 2019. Uh, so satisfaction with different uh, life aspects. So we have the family, which is high, um, behavior of your kids, development of personal uh, characteristics, uh, personal uh, e like sex or intimate life, um, attitude to towards yourself from other people, um, then the, the, the people that surround you, your experience and skills. Uh, so the blue light, as you see, it's 2017, and um, 19 is the orange one. Um, the chance to be independent, the slight increase. But uh, I would like so here we have the your job, and then we have some uh, like deeps uh, uh, level of your wealth. So um, we don't we do not talk about uh, yeah. So it's the wealth um, opportunities that you can use, or it's pretty much the same. Your li living conditions uh, in, in terms of the house um, environment, uh, and here we have economics in Ukraine. Um, budget funding here, and uh, um, this is the most interesting: is confidence in tomorrow or like future day, like in the future. So you see everything that is connected with uh, personal life, or that uh, like people can figure out for themselves on their local level is quite high. And when we start speaking about the country, um, it's interesting because um, on the personal level, people solving their issues and uh, they see their impact on how they can fix things in their home, in their families, in their schools, etc. But when it comes to the country, uh, they don't know how to, they don't know what's the problem, they see the media and they perceive the information from the media, everything is bad. And uh, uh, for the past two years we had the massive information, like internal, uh, I wouldn't call it flash mob, but it's a uh, couple of political parties and politicians were uh, calling it uh, like a, a tariff genocide when the government increased uh, the cost of utilities, the heating, the water, government increased and politicians start to use it. And it, it became like, a depra like it, it's re it, the, the price increased, yes. But if we take comparison of percentage of uh, how, the, how much you spend based on your general income, it's not that big compared to like 2013 or 2010. But because it was everywhere on the media. Uh, people start uh, repeating it, and without no, without even understanding what, like, is it really genocide? Sh should we use this word? What what is happening? <coughs> and there are like many examples like this. But with this chart, I want to show you that um, attitude towards people see and feel around them, like in their in their home communities. Uh, where they have like at least some impact on their personal life, and confidence is this is bigger. That's something they uh, see and have influence in the country or uh, like beyond their personal space, right? And this is important because um, my take my take for that is because they don't know how to influence that what is happening in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, they more or less learn how to earn money or I don't know, fix shelves 
put the door or like you know raise kids, but they do not uh, know uh, how to influence the country. And there is an interesting like imagine uh, I don't know you haven't been to Ukrainian small cities, but most of you probably except, except the future guys. Uh, Imagine there is no um, bigger building than two floors. Um, everything like the road is is bumpy. The the holes in the road and the market looks like just uh, an empty field where people on Sunday or Saturday comes and set in their tents to sell to sell stuff. So next to my city, there is another even smaller city than mine. Starosinava uh, tells you anything, but I have to, I have to keep it uh, within because it, it's an actual story. Um, so I got into this market. Uh, it was Sunday. So bazaar people from villages come into this city to buy stuff, to buy goods, bread, sausages, whatever. Um, and I'm handing out my newspapers with the program, hey, I'm Victor, I'm 27, I'm running for the parliament, and <laughs> thinking, are you crazy or what? Like, you're going to change nothing. So one lady, uh, please have my newspaper. And she's like, newspaper, better give me 1,500 hymnes. I said, uh, well, it's kind of bribery. Uh, if I pay you for your votes, it's bribery. Uh, and she saying out loud, I will not tell anyone <laughs> on the mark. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm asking her, like, how do you think if the person like, who's running giving you 1,500 hymnes, how the hell he or she will get it back? Like, maybe from your tax or your, like, any other way? I don't care. I need to pay my loan. So, um, short side. Yeah, so here today at the voting station, at the voting poll, I'm taking 1,500, so, but 1,500 is big price. Usually it's 200. Uh, <laughs> here. Uh, and there are systems, but it's not a story about the bribery and elections. Um, people do not see uh, their impact of their vote, so they believe that their vote, their, their vote will not change anything. They don't believe, uh, they, they think that, oh, they, those guys in Kiev, they already solved their issues, they already know who will be in the parliament, and like, it's fixed. So my vote changed nothing, and it's better to have this 200 hymnus or 1500 or any other amount, or in the other district they, uh, they have this grocery bags with frozen chicken and, and pizzas and stuff. And this was instead of 200. So people were selling their votes for food. Because it's um, low leaning fruit. I'm getting this 200 or grocery bag. Like, my vote changing anything. So I'm, I'm not losing. I'm not losing anything. So, and I explained this, uh, um, say this valley in this circle uh, that people uh, haven't learned how they can influence the entire country. Like, okay, not even country, their own community. Because I'm coming from this small city and I'm asking, okay, why you haven't changed, like, for example, like, you, you haven't moved this uh, garbage containers away from your house because it smells. Well, this is the city council, like, we're not change anything, but, well, you elected the city council, so you can demand, like, to do something. Well, like, we tried, but they actually didn't, but they, they say for, for a good word that they have tried. So people do not know how to use instruments on, of, like, influences those uh, they have elected, and they don't believe that their vote or their, like, some um, active, uh, active actions or some, act of, uh, some actions will change anything. And... Um, yeah, so this is, uh, I'm, I'm now uh, trying to, um, I know, um, how to say, uh, throw you some facts and thoughts so we can discuss later. And uh, this, is, uh, this was about the personal and the uh, common. 
And next one is... Uh, Can I ask yes, a question? Yes, sure, again? Sure. Okay, because um, it was confidence in the future, right? Which yeah. Was it 1.9 or something? Uh, yeah. yeah. Somewhere here. So, um, at the elections now, there, as far as I understood it, there were quite some young people elected to be a parliament member, right? Yeah. So, is there maybe a the difference between like older people and the youth and young people in that exact figure, like confidence in the future? Does it differ from young people and... Older people? Um, older people more skeptic, that, that is true, because they, they have experience of uh, nothing will change. And younger, uh, they were just... Um, um, this uh, election campaign and those actors, uh, so the turnout rate on the parliamentary election was less than 50%. Mm -hmm. So uh, half of the people didn't vote. So we cannot say that uh, they confident or they take care about the future because it's uh, like in, in sociology they would say like if we served uh, like did a survey of half of the population it's quite valid, but uh, we don't know who like uh, there is an assumption that those who were on vacation those who can um, uh, go for a vacation and brought us somewhere so those people who earn in some money they didn't vote. So, um, like those, uh, this is my actually like next slide of um, the distribution of wealth. Uh, so those who have a bit more, an assumption that they, ha they didn't vote this summer. Yeah, the turnout on presidential election was around uh, 64, 65%. So a bit, a bit higher and it's uh, around Ukrainian average turnout rate. Uh, but, um, I would not say that younger people see a brighter future. I would say they don't think of it. They just live, mm -hmm. like they try, try to uh, live alone because uh, the most common saying in Ukraine, uh, oh, it's political, I'm, I don't want to be involved in politics. So uh, even if you invite in people for the like NGO or like some street direct action. Oh no no no! It's politics. It's political. I, I I'm uh, apolitical. Or I don't want to be involved. So it's it's pretty common idea. Uh, I try to avoid like generalizing. Yeah, it's something that I perceive. I, I hear from the people traveling and doing like workshops and uh, like talking to people and something I see from different surveys. Yeah. Do you sep I mean, I guess you do in this. You separate the the elections for the parliament, the, for the president, and for the municipalities. Yes. So you have like, a, 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 and do they take place at the same time? Uh, this year uh, we we had regular like presidential elections in uh, March and April, and then president dissolved the parliament, and we had uh, uh, not regular like the uh, so our regular elections uh, should happen in October. But the municipality elections? And the municipality scheduled October 2020. But this president and this parliament, they will call for uh, elections in uh, March or April because now they have huge support. This is why the president is of the parliament. So he couldn't wait till October because uh, otherwise his uh, support rate will go down, will decrease. So he dissolved the parliament, he got another increase because people uh, wanted to kick off the corrupted deputy, like members of the parliament, etc. And uh, so now they even increase their support, the, he increased his support and he plans to keep it this high and win the local elections. Why? They, they had a chance to call for local election this year, but there are two obstacles. They you don't mean have local election. Is that the same as municipality election? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they don't have uh, people on the ground. Yeah. So they don't have. Uh, uh, they have. They it's like a lack of uh, human resources on the ground who can run, and uh, many um, shady and corrupted guys from the local communities trying to get into the party yeah. to try to run because they have uh, set, uh, like recent polls. 79% of support rate for the president, 79%. So uh, uh, now our northern neighbor 
really jealous because uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he, he's. But you are running for the municipality. Then? No, I ran for the parliament. For the parliament. I ran this a summer for the, the parliament. And for the municipality as well. No, uh, not this, this next year. So no, it's next year. Next year. The municipality is next year. So you have separated. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's separated. Yeah. Yes, and uh, we have. Uh, yeah. Um, that is, okay, I will not go to the decentralization reform. It's, uh, it's another topic. Uh, so, have I answered your question? Yeah, well, yeah. thanks. <laughs> any other bit before we jump into the next slide? I was actually curious about the decentralization reform, but maybe you come to it later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, because I, I mean, connecting to when you talk about the feeling that they're not affecting anything locally. Because uh -huh. Okay, we can actually talk about it now because. Um, so decentralization reform, for those who, uh, who do not know, um, Ukraine as a post-Soviet country, we had really decentralized public administration and uh, the state uh, apparatus. Or really centralized. Really, really centralized. centralized. So it's vertical. Uh, during Soviet Union, somebody said, like, we have to do this and this in this community, and that direction goes down on the chain, the chain of command to this community, and they uh, did it. Uh, local uh, like elected representatives, they really didn't matter during the Soviet time. So after we got independence, there were some uh, rights and some opportunities for local elected representatives to do stuff. So they got some authority, they got some rights to for we call it self governance. Yes, for self governance. But still, it was really centralized due to the fact that the budget was distributed by the public administration appointed from Kyiv. So uh, local, uh, local uh, council, they kind of vote for the budget, but how to distribute the budget, this is the administration that appointed from the Kyiv decides. Uh, reform of decentralization is the, like, uh, like water falling down three things. Uh, the authority, so uh, having ability to do something, to perform some actions on the local level, like authority power, power would be the best, better word. Um, resources, so uh, people in communities, they have, they're getting more money, and responsibility, uh, because uh, responsibility in terms of political responsibility, uh, because now they have an authority and resources and they have to be accountable for their people if they uh, screw something up so they have will, uh, uh, the political responsibility will kick them out in next elections so those three things is like three pillars of decentralization reform and because all the authority resources and responsibility before that was in Kyiv just for the uh, like general the government uh, this is first aspect. Second aspect, and here we come to understanding what is personal, what is common. Uh, before 2015, in Ukraine we had uh, more than 12,000 uh, administrative units. So it's villages, cities, etc. So all those units, more than 12,000. So you can imagine the number of uh, like money and budget to fund just the apparatus, <laughs> just the bless you, uh, fund just the, administrati the administration of uh, running all the buildings and this institution. So part of this decentralization reform, except uh, so like those three pillars, is to amalgamate uh, communities and, uh, for example, um, shrink uh, 10, 12, 15. Uh, like smaller villages with the center uh, in bigger village into one administrative unit. Because um, the economic links between villages and a bit bigger cities are really strong because people from the village go in there to work. So they produce goods, they sell goods, they generate taxes, they generate profit in bigger cities. They come in home to their uh, village and village got nothing. Like from this gener this uh, so the idea is to uh, amalgamate those administrative units 
because they uh, they generate uh, uh, they generate goods taxes all together so they have a right together to distribute it um, so the process is to shrink down from 12,000 to 1,500 so in 10 times how do they determine the best uh, uh, good question graphic um, part of it was voluntarily and part of it was uh, we have these regional councils can, can also be politically sensitive area. of course uh, first then they, when the reform started uh, they were uh, making perspective plans of amalgamation and the uh, regional council so the entire oblast uh, the entire region uh, that has around uh, what uh, I don't know, sometimes it's uh, thousands, sometimes it's a bit less, a couple of hundred units. They cut in um, those amalgamated communities, they try to think of a uh, center of economic magnetism or those the economic centers that can, uh, they have links to the like other communities and they uh, like actually cut in those amalgamated like perspective, uh, perspective amalgamated communities. So, and it was political because in future, these communities will be uh, cut into um, electoral districts. So this is first thing. Second thing is uh, who can generate more profit, more tax. So there are many factors, but uh, regional council did that. Not all of the communities voluntarily wanted to go align with the plan, so they were resistant. There are also like huge conflicts between mayor of the city and the head of the village, that they do not get along, that they uh, don't want to work with each other. And uh, so the second factor and third factor, imagine you, uh, the head of the village, you have village council, you have the office, you're like, uh, and, like you're the guy, uh, <laughs> the, the the person uh, in the village, and now they telling you that you will be a representative in the amalgamated council. So you see, so there are many factors why it didn't go that fast. Why I'm, I'm saying that uh, this will uh, is uh, being solved with decentralization because people have to negotiate people from different villages have to sit around the table and decide how they're going to amalgamate and the government create incentives like if you amalgamate will give you will uh, more tax will stay in in the community or if you amalgamate you will have access to some state programs uh, energy efficiency fund regional development fund um, EBRD, European some projects, so you will have access to those projects and uh, a bit smarter leaders in the communities uh, they, uh, they bought it in 2015 and their results are like they increased their budgets so if you count separate budgets and now their uh, shared budget it increased 10 times so those, those were the smartest in the first wave um, why it, it's, um, it's uh, a breakthrough? Because people have to negotiate. This is something that we haven't learned in school, because in, in Ukrainian school you have a personal task. You cannot uh, turn right or back, you cannot cheat, you have personal task and it's your personal responsibility. If, something, if uh, someone in your class uh, gets a better mark, so like that something wrong or like there is this competition uh, is not fo uh, focused on uh, cooperation in, 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 my, in my school, in my uh, high school we didn't have group projects when you have a group project you have to deal with other people, you have to deal with other characters it's something that will be with you in your entire life this is why it's really hard for people in these communities <coughs> to negotiate with others because they, they know only their personal interests and they do not know their team interests. So for them it's really uh, it's crewing their mindsets because it, it's a drastic sh shift from this like personal gains into team or shared gains. 
uh, this is uh, what can be sold, but also after uh, like first elections, after like first round of the amalgamation, this reform become really political, and um, political games start like on the ground start playing, and now in some communities that were amalgamated, people do not see the effect because the guys, the head of the village, the head of the city, they uh, negotiate some deals, and they do not distribute this public good to the community. So in some cases, it's really good. And in cases where this negotiation was not in the favor of the people, of the public, it doesn't work that well. Um, but I have, like, I believe that in the future, the, the entire dialogue of negotiating can change, can change this. Uh, we have another reform that also forcing people to negotiate. It's um, I don't know how to translate for uh, this it's, So it, the apartment building, uh, the multi floor, and you have your own apartment. Before the reform, you can like you live in your apartment, and this is uh, you take care of, and there is a common uh, communal service that cleans it, that uh, paint the walls, that uh, do the electricity, the light bulbs. It's some communal service. Now we allow to people who live in the multi-floor uh, apartment building create like, not it's not an NGO, but they, uh, how to say? A private structure who who manage all this stuff? Yeah, so private they, management of building. Pri private management. So they negotiate that from now on, the building is their shared, not just my apartment, but hundred apartments. It's our <coughs> shared space, and we decide who to hire to for the light bulbs, for painting, and this is again they have to negotiate with each other. I've been to my home city to the meeting of the owners of the apartments. You can sell popcorns and and just and uh, and watch and watch the reality show of how people are uh, uh, remembering all like all like bad deeds to each other or something. And but still, they have to negotiate because they know if they pay the same amount of money that they paid to the communal service, but they pay now for the uh, they chip in together. Uh, they can save half of this money and improve the building. For example, the new windows, new uh, heating system, new uh, the light uh, lighting system in the in the in the doorways. Uh, so they know the profit uh, if they work together. So it's like a bit of gamification of this experience. How to. Uh, because they know if they if they live separately, if they decide it separately, uh, so like nothing will change. But if they work together, they will have person responsible for it. They have new light bulbs, they have new heating, and they save money to for other renovations in the building. So in this way, people start learning how to talk to each other, how to negotiate, how to um, how to say to uh, reach come reach out common goals. Yes. What about the hospitals? Uh, is what it, about the hospitals? Is it, is it, how do you, and, I mean, are, do you go together a couple of villages or, or cities to, to build um, hospitals or is this? Uh, <laughs> it's it's a, a good question because last year I worked in Ministry of Health uh, and uh, the answer is uh, yes. So um, the, the reform was for the health care. As, like before in Soviet Union, every village had uh, like um, uh, like the uh, personal doctor. doctor and uh, actual his office. But now uh, we count money and like it's really expensive to keep him and the building in each village. So those amalgamated communities will have some primary care centers. And uh, the community has to invest money into infrastructure and into cars so the doctor can drive 
to the villages uh, or like doesn't matter or if it's the big village so they can have their own doctor and uh, if he or she has enough patients to earn money and keep uh, so the, the process of finding change from the institutional just the building in every village to the service so if there are enough people to to have in the village their family doctor general practitioner uh, like they find the, the person, they uh, sign the declaration, and he or she works there. If they're not enough, so the doctor is in a big, bigger city or in another village and works for both villages or for a couple of villages. So this is the primary healthcare level, and uh, secondary depends also on number of citizens, number of patients. Um, there, uh, it's, it's secondary and tertiary. Uh, there will be basically in each region there will be three hospital districts with um, mm, like um, a higher level specialty because you cannot keep hospital it's too expensive and if uh, and it's danger of, it's a life threat if the doctor the um, uh, what's the name of the like uh, human birth doctor mm. Huh? Obstetrics, yes. So the obstetrics doctor uh, has to have at least uh, three, four hundred baby delivery a year to keep him or herself in a good doctor shape. And if it's if it's uh, the village or a small city when he or she has ten, twelve. 50, it's a life threat for the uh, mother and the child. Mm. So, and it's really hard to explain to the people that it's danger if, okay, we can, you can keep the doctor, but it's dangerous because uh, they lose in shape. So it's better to have one in a bigger um, uh, like area, but with the transport. With, uh, which is uh, eventually will deliver the mother to the to the to the hospital. So uh, yeah, no, but uh, the baby delivery it's not three per region. It's it's more. It's usually it should be per amalgamated community, but uh, it depends on the number of citizens because it and it varies from from districts. Yeah. Is that up to the municipalities or for the like um, central uh, parliament? Uh, no, not to the central. Uh, uh, so this the the tertiary level. The, this the really narrow specialist. They sit on the in the regional center. All the others, the municipalities, they have to decide, and they um, the, the the funding system changed from institutional to the service. So if they will have enough uh, like operations or manipulations to keep the doctor there. You can have it if it's not enough for the doctor to get a good salary because he got like his part from the from the service delivery. So uh, now communities they they will think, okay, we can pay for, like if it's not enough for the doctor, so we can add him some money from our local budget to keep him him there. But uh, they will take care more of the citizen because if their interest uh, the best possible health of their citizen is their interest. And they have to, if it's not enough for their doctor, they will chip in. Yes? Sorry. Well, I, I guess the, the, I, the, I have a question on the same topic. Uh, no, no, I'm just curious about the size of, of the amount of constituents um, of such uh, an elevated area. Uh, in the uh, electoral or the hospital? No, no just in general, like, like such an area, how, how many constituents would it have? Like how many people would get there in such an amalgamated? In amalgamated? It, it depends, there are smaller and bigger. So imagine if there is like one village of southern people and ten villages of 500, and they amalgamated with this center in uh, 1,000. So it will be uh, what almost six thousand. Okay, so it's pretty small. It's small, but they're bigger, and there are amalgamated communities around the cities. Uh, so um, yeah, um, it, it 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 depends. Yes. What can you say about the difference in uh, wealth between the city and the rural areas? Uh, um, 
in my hometown, uh, which is 35,000 inhabitants, mm -hmm. uh, the salary that people uh, work for mm -hmm. starts from uh, 150 euros. Mm -hmm. For example, in Kiev you cannot find people working for that salary. In villages it can be even less because it, it depends also on the city, on the cost of utilities, cost of living. Because in my home city there are a lot of, um, there are uh, like military bases mm -hmm. and uh, army and soldiers, they get in a bit more money than the average. So they get in what, 400, 500 euros. So because we have many soldiers, so the cost of living in the city increase and the salaries for the others should increase as well. They not always do that, but uh, they should. Um, in smaller villages, the cost of living is less because you do not pay utilities because you have your own heating, you have your own water, you pay just for electricity, and uh, if you garden and you have your this household, you cut off your like food expenses. And, uh, but there is nothing much to do in the village. So people from the village work in the city, uh, they earn their better money, but they spend some on a, on a transit, and uh, they save it and build a better house. So they don't, um, it's another thing, they do not invest in the personal development, they invest into like uh, fences, and they invest in the second floor of, uh, of, the, build, of the house or the garage. Uh, and um, yeah, so this this is actually like my my last like this was a question for my last slide. But before that, is uh, you know Thomas Piketty, the the one who speaks and writes about the the gap, the inequality. Mm -hmm. So um, if we divide, uh, so this is forty percent of taxpayers with the average income. Uh, and uh, if we divide um, them into uh, like on uh, uh, poor, like the last decimal of, of poor people, so the inequality goes like it. it their income and uh, is 3.8 percent higher. And if we in Ukraine, the last column is Ukraine. And if we take uh, one percent of the richest is 43 percent, uh, 43 times higher. But in the US it's 24 times, and average in Europe is 11.7 percent on uh, 2010. So inequality in Ukraine is much bigger than somewhere else in the developed world. And uh, I'm asking myself why, and uh, here like uh, rule of law, investment, social support, my answer is education and opportunities. I know it's a long shot. It's a like a strategic discussion, but I uh, like all my observations between uh, um, differences differences says in the societies. I uh, I lived three months in Canada in one program. I traveled to the US. I studied in France. Lived in Belgium. I did some work in Poland. So what I'm seeing, what I'm trying to um, like as an anthropologist to research is why people behave in this way and um, all the all the, uh, the ties goes to the education because as I said previously in my class I had uh, uh, like I had a class but I have personal tasks I, I wasn't trained to work in a group I uh, became a good like, team member only because of something I learned not in the school. Yeah, like I organized some events, I then in the university I worked uh, like more on the community building. This is why now it's easier for me to work in big organization because I know how to um, create uh, this environment and common goals and how to negotiate with people. when. My classmates, uh, they were not involved in some team projects. They were not involved into some like big organization and not like contributing to the uh, like common good within the organization. They were 
okay, this is the job, I've done my tasks, I go home. Like, here's my family. And this is uh, education and opportunities. Smaller cities, they have less opportunities, but uh, I saw the, this on my home city when we, uh, like, this year and last year, uh, a new coffee shops start opening in my home city. So something that is really common for Kyiv, coffee shops, pour over, rough coffee, this thing, came into a smaller city. First it was like a wild thing, a strange thing, people were like afraid of it, but then they decided, hey, this is the place, like it's sort of entertainment, yeah, to go there, to meet with people, and this is where like new connections, new, new things start happening. So if there will be more places of uh, like creating new links, new connections in the smaller cities, plus some extra education based uh, like uh, for like um, skill set negotiation, uh, like some professional skill set plus negotiation, it's a huge potential of smaller cities because cost of living there is much less. So to do stuff there cost much less and uh, you become an uh, an you, you become an, an impact uh, investor, not just like a finance investor into smaller smaller communities. That uh, yeah, I will share one idea after your question. Uh, yeah, I have a question regarding the school system. Is it in Ukraine completely centralized that we just have one school system, one art, uh, like one type of schools, or do you also have like private schools where the rich kids are going to? Because then again, it uh, also needs to be evaluated which schools are handling the topics in what way. Um, uh, so, for instance, what you're referring to with the group, um, with the group work, is it maybe there also a problem? There are not many private schools, mm -hmm. and they mostly in uh, big cities. So, uh, Kyiv or other regional city, like even smaller, like Zhitomir or Rivne or whatever. So when the city has more than 200,000 people, there might be some private schools. But it, uh, as you said, it's for uh, wealthy, it's for rich, mm -hmm. and not always people um, can afford it. Uh, it has like different, more uh, student-centric approach, more like uh, modern approaches of teaching and creating a learning environment. Yes. Uh, but it's expensive and we increase in the gap because uh, like those wealthy having better education, here we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but wouldn't it be then especially important to, to focus there on this kind of group work, on this kind of like shared mindset that they are one community, like one Ukrainian state? But uh, their impact of the private school is limited because they're based in a big city. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, and like depends like how many students they have, but uh, the, the thing I started, many people live not in the cities or not in the big cities. So like having impact on smaller communities is to change the entire school system. We have this now school uh, education reform, but there are also problems. It can be a great idea of new school, new competences, but who's going to deliver? Like our teachers, educated in the Soviet Union, will not talk with you about competences and uh, common goals and synergy and, and stuff. Uh, those uh, who educated now in the independent Ukraine, we have interesting thing. The, the school grads with the highest uh, grades, uh, not going to the pedago we have this pedagogical universities. They're going to medicine, medical schools, polytechnica. They're going to some classical universities, and they're not going for the teachers' profession. Mm -hmm. So we have negative selection in teachers' environment. So uh, worse school grads goes to the pedagogical universities, getting pedagogical degree, and goes to school to teach kids, and they. Be, like below the average of the uh, graduate year, and uh, education in this pedagogical university is also. Yes, can you just uh, 
three, four minutes more? Yeah, sure. Uh, like now, like we, um, like, uh, questions, yes. Um, your own uh, single mandate consistency, is, is, is that been amalgamated or is it according to the uh, it, it has, uh, it had, uh, it has some amalgamated communities because my single constituency is five rayons and uh, each rayon should be uh, one, two, three, or four amalgamated communities. So in my rayon, in my uh, single constituency, <coughs> were five amalgamated communities, and uh, one of them used all the benefits, and in others, uh, old politicians just uh, control, like absorb the power of amalgamated community and done nothing. And they uh, like and people disappointed. Well, this decentralization reform, we got nothing from it. So uh, why should we support someone? Yeah, I would say that decentralization was a good decision, but it was not presented to people um, in proper way, and not all of them know how to use it. So that's a big problem: education of for community how to use it. Because yes, it's a good opportunity, but if they don't know. Yeah, from my observation, they would not use it, and all politicians are just like, using all of this for themselves. Mm -hmm. What happened, for example, in my Ternate region, uh, richer, uh, the richer uh, villages, uh, they gather with richer villagers, and the gap again increased, mm -hmm. because they don't want to share their income with uh, uh, poor, uh, poor villages. Yeah. Um, yes, please. Can you just go back to the one slide? Yeah. This one. Yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. What is the first column? The second column. Sorry. Uh, so this is Scandinavian countries in 70s and 80s. Yeah. Uh, those 40% uh, of um, uh, taxpayers with average income, the 10% of the most wealthy, 9% of the least uh, of the least wealthy. And uh, what? No, uh, it's 9%. Okay, so this 10% of the most wealthy divided into next 9% and the, the percent of the, well, the most wealthy. Okay, so it's Scandinavian, then European, then USA? And USA and Ukraine, and the years you as follows. Yeah, okay, good. Do you also have some numbers for Eastern Europe? Uh, this is uh, from the translation of uh, Vicky T's book, uh, 21st Century, The Capital in 21st Century. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is the just uh, uh, like uh, like we can research or because he he's still alive and produced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the last thing uh, that uh, what I like I'm talking about it now because I'm trying to work in the sphere of uh, closing the gap. As um, I'm now creating a think tank. Uh, it's politically affiliated with the party I ran with, with Follows Party. And what I'm trying to do there is to design policies involving those in smaller cities. So we have an idea and we gather in the bus, we have this expert and uh, touring around the country and like talking about the problem and the solution, trying to engage people in this the decision making, in the pro like in the solution creation. Uh, also showing, uh, like, linking uh, average citizen in a smaller city with the decision, plus linking uh, the electorate with elected representatives. Because those linkages, like, uh, education is a long shot, right? But for the short, like, the, this, uh, um, some short terms, we have to link uh, those who making decisions with those uh, for whom they making decisions. So this is what I'm doing now and uh, when we were talking about what I can share with you guys, it's my recent experience of election and something that I will be dealing in the next couple of years. Yeah. And Vicar will also stay for after lunch for the talk yeah, show, yes. right? So we will have more chances to uh, discuss. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, and yeah. <laughs>